Questi sono due tipi di animali. Here you can see two different types of animals. You can see a few dogs, huskies and some wolves. If you can't understand which is which, even if you have a dog, if we were to ask a, a, a person with no experience in that field uh, that question, some, you would have uh, some 70% of accuracy in, in the forecast. How can we teach a machine through, autom through machine learning How can we teach a machine to solve that problem? We apply a well-established technique. We ask experts to label this data. We have to tell the machine who's a husky and who's a wolf. And you have a sufficiently large number of examples of this type. There are many different models of learning, really, M many learning models that can lead you to generalize these models. You can understand which is the mathematical fun function that correlates one picture to its class, the wolf or the dog class. So this work was done on thousands of pictures uh, labeled this way, and through l deep learning, We have been able to identify a model with an incredible accuracy, much better than I want, the one I mentioned earlier on, being equal to or close to 98.5%. They use all of the techniques that data scientists apply to be sure that the model you use is a high quality model. The problem is the one we raised earlier on, how does this black box work? And there is no answer to that question. For example, there was a study that was performed into this specific case by colleagues from the Washington State University who developed an, an ad hoc technique for this purpose. They worked on that very hard. And then they discovered that in a deterministic manner, Uh, this, uh, the method the machine uses to classify an animal as a dog or as a wolf is the presence of snow on the back in the background. Deep learning classifies the pictures like that. Look at these pictures. All of the pictures of wolves have been taken in the winter with snow in the background. And this big amount of big data uh, had a big problem, a collection, a data collection bias, a data collection artifact, so that the machine, which is very effective in identifying biases that can lead you to draw a conclusion, has found this husky dog, which is classified as a, a wolf because there's snow in the background. How come this example, which may sound stupid, is so important? The first accidents of self-driving cars, the first accidents were due to cases, to problems of this type. The vision v viewing system on the viewing system placed on board the car mistook a white van for a piece of the sky and so they crushed into it. Uh, so this is the cover page of one of the most recent latest issues of nature. Here you can see decision making support devices concerning the um, uh, possibility of uh, uh, freeing a prisoner based on the, his possibility of uh, me, uh, uh, committing crimes in the future. Uh, uh, well, this is a story that was told by a journalist of ProPublica.org. This is the title of their article. They, they analyzed uh, many cases, and they described that this software has a, a strong racial bias. This is just an example. This is a black man, and this is a white man. And, uh, 
um, comparable situations, they obtain two very different low risk values. And in the end, they discovered that the judgment passed was absolutely wrong because the white man committed a crime later on and the black men didn't. So after this uh, ju journalist's inquiry, the software was banned in most of the United States and this case was widely discussed. This is an example of machine learning that uh, 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 learns data that contain a collection art, data collection artifacts and mistakes in general. So, um, so there is an over-representation of the, po of the population uh, of criminals, and uh, there are also bias in the judgments passed by judges, as is the case for soccer player. So they may be influenced by race-related biases. The third example I would like to give you is related to advertising and commercial offerings. This is a case that emerged thanks to Bloomberg's journalists more or less one year ago. They discovered that Amazon offered um, the free same-day delivery in many American cities, as you can see, in many places. But uh, they do so systematically in many cities, including Boston. And they carefully avoid areas that are inhabited by black minority. Roxbury is surrounded by uh, by neighborhood where this offering is implemented, whereas that area is avoided. Uh, and they do, don't even know why, apparently, at Amazon. It's a choice that was made by the algorithm. Uh, so this is an example of how a bias relating to a specific behavior, a judgment, a choice, that becomes a real written rule, a rule written within the code which limits the freedom of choice of many people because this is AI works for good or for bad. They exploit the traces we leave through finger prints. Uh, also, they use the black boxes of our cars with a GPS system. We have been studying them in, for 15 years in cooperation with some insurance institutions in Italy and abroad. And not only can we actually identify the geography and the behaviors of our cities, but this also allows us, as we know very well, they will allow us to uh, learn something about the risk profile of our customers, and so we can make decisions and choices accordingly. Here you can see how Rome wakes up and how it behaves. You can see the different trajectories followed, and this this information is contained in our uh, black boxes. If we decide to analyze the risk uh, related to a driver or the recurrence um, risk of a criminal, or if we try to understand whether a specific clinical manifestation is a sign or a symptom of a disease, well, uh, all of this information is biased by a number of elements. In that respect, artificial intelligence is, is really extremely human, too human, because essentially this is learning from the data we leave behind, so to say, the, when we speak about artificial intelligence, AI, uh, you can here observe um, a mole you have on your body and your skin. These are defined as malignant or benign, and there is a predictive model that 
learn how to infer a mechanism from these pictures that can be applied to general situations. So you can do that with a white box. You can do it with a simple model that is easy to interpret. This is a small decision-making tree that allows you to understand why a specific picture a specific clinical evidence, type of clinical evidence should be labeled as benign or malignant. But if it is a black box like this, here you have a recurrent neural network. And if you use the interconnections between hundreds of thousands of auxiliary variables, at the end you will have a response, uh, an answer. And I can't understand whether the system is grasping a big opportunity in this case, because with data science, in most cases, we have the ability to put together data that represent examples that I can learn from, increasingly sophisticated analytics and a good computing power, so that I can really have an impact on our society and our industries. But I must be aware of how black boxes in artificial intelligence are really working, because otherwise we will create system and we won't know how they work. What is the color of, these cat, of this cat? The uh, uh, human attention would focus in this part of the of the picture many deep deep learning machines make a completely different choice and why do they make that choice and either are those effective are those reliable should we trust them should we trust the machines the point is that uh, we have an increasing awareness for safety and ethical reasons and because we need to safeguard uh, people's autonomy and people's freedom well it becomes increasingly important to have levels of transparency and responsibility in many aspects where we are applying ai in healthcare in justice in the analysis of risks in whatever sector, um, banking or insurance. We need to avoid a situation where we create a society based on black boxes. And even Europe is asking that question. We saw uh, the creation of a different model as a great opportunity in Europe. It's not only a question of not letting algorithms to decide for everything. It's not just a question of taking responsibility for our individual decision making. The, the subjects of the decisions, the need to understand why the decisions have been made. So we need to invent technologies that don't exist for the moment. We have invented learning, learning, Uh, technologies. We haven't yet invented technologies that can explain why something is happening. We hear about explainable AI, discrimination aware, data mining, etc. Uh, one week ago, uh, there was a commentary on nature. Bias detectives, the researchers striving to make algorithms fair. How can we possibly learn to do auditing on the algorithms we have created in a way that is not codified? I am an IT expert that was born earlier on. If there was a mistake, they, they would look for me. Now, algorithms are not codified any longer. You can learn them from examples. You have a need to validate them to understand how they work. This is becoming increasingly important and decisive. We started to work on that 10 years ago. This is an article published in the year 2008. They invented this term, discrimination aware data mining. Uh, someone would call it a sleeping beauty because this is an article that nobody had considered for some time, but in the last of four or th three or four years it became overly cited. This is a problem we can 
uh, fight against. We can fight against machine learning with machine learning. How? We must uh, go for data mining to discover decisions. To, we have to collect data about decisions. We try to um, understand what is the logic beneath these decisions um, with uh, a constraint on the model that is interpretable and understandable. We can provide credit data, people that ask for money in a bank, they ask for a loan, and you can discover a rule that tells you and it's not a, a rule that was created beforehand, but it was discovered by the system. Uh, there are foreign workers that are refused loans to buy a car five times more than other random uh, people that ask for loans. We can apply this type of reasoning to decisions that can be based on algorithms or that can be human, or there may be a combination of the two. There are many examples that uh, are, for example, cases where research projects were assessed or the forecasting of crimes, or also cases of indirect discrimination, uh, as uh, happens in insurance or in the case of Amazon that I showed earlier on. This is a practice that is prohibited in the States. There is a law prohibiting redlining, that is to say granting a loan or, yes, granting a loan based on the area where you live. So what is the final point I would like to make? We need to pass from discrimination discovery to black box explanation in an Aristotelic sort of way. Aristotle would uh, actually try to elucidate things of that of this sort. There is a boom in this research area. 4,000 researchers are focusing on this issue, which is extremely difficult in general terms. And the point is you should identify an agnostic explanation of black, black box decision making. They should go about uh, an audit of the system and they should find a correct proxy. This is the only technical point I would like to make, but the idea is that the problem of classification, the problem of choice, lies in identifying a boundary in this data space between the different decisions. Overall, these borders can be complex, and that's why deep learning works well, because it can adjust to complicated separations, whereas a, a statistical regression line has no possibility of being successful. But if you ask, uh, uh, would you please explain why a loan was was denied this gentleman, possibly the border between the two decisions is simple. If you go for, if you create a local model that explains the behavior for this subject, you may have a locally a simple decision and you can put together many of them to build up an understandable model. This is the pathway we are working on, we are following, and we. this is the issue we are working on. And I would like to draw my, performance, my presentation to a close on talking about soccer again. This is an example of a, a human black box explanation. What we have done, essentially, is we took data that concern performance and that concern performance assessment, and we discovered that if you put together a sufficient number, a sufficiently large number of observations, not only of an objective nature, but also contextual, as Laszlo explained earlier on, we can uh, get to an artificial judge built up with machine learning that cannot be distinguished from a natural judge. 
if you look at him while it's working and you do not know that it's a robot, you won't realize it is a robot because it has the same sort of uh, relationship that the two humans would have between them. And so I can take this object and explain it. This is a black box, but vis-a-vis -a, -vis a human black box, It hasn't, it hasn't a flaw that humans have. Uh, usually, if you ask the black box a thousand questions, they won't change their mind, whereas humans would do that. And then um, this is an, an interesting context. This sort of approach would apply to art competitions, judicial decisions, our own decisions, human decisions. We, we can focus on the HOPE method. HOPE stands for harvest, observe, predict, and explain. So harvest loads of data, observe them there well, create many features on performance and on the context within which this happens. Try to predict, create uh, an artificial judge that can't be distinguished from a human judge and torture him or it to explain the logic followed by a human judge. Why should that be meaningful? Because uh, it may be meaningful to open these black boxes to, in order to learn how to decide better, how to make better decision. You should give, uh, give people better tools against the undesired effect of automated decisions. It can enable us to reveal and protect new vulnerabilities and to implement the right uh, of explanation, so this is a big positive challenge. And it can allow you to improve industrial standards for developing AI-powered products because we need to increase the trust of companies and consumers. And we also have to open black boxes because we have to help people make better decisions and to reason on the logics be behind their decisions. So this thing is not there to replace human decision makers. We have to understand what is the logic behind our decisions, and we have to be able to make decisions in a more autonomous way. We have to align algorithms with human values, and therefore, not only should we preserve, but we should indeed expand human autonomy. We shouldn't reduce it through artificial intelligence. <laughs>